for internet so it's better if I remove my video let me cancel it All right, one, how is everyone feeling today? If you can drop an image, be super, super amazing, amazing. Before we get started, any emoji, or anything you want to tell us, or if you can even react, you are feeling today on a Tuesday, how is it? How is everyone? They are emojis flying. Let more people just write in the chat box you're feeling low or great or good. Hello, can you hear me? What are people telling us how they are feeling today? It's just in the chat box. Write one word so that I can know that we're together at least. If it's in 50 50, I guess. But don't you really? Okay, let's get started uh, for now. So, this session. Session for week seven. I'm actually very, very excited because it's week seven, guys. So I was asking, how is everyone doing? But you know, we're going to be talking about as we get to hear the fact of us to the people who we are junior, who we are seniors to. Like you giving feedback probably to your team members or to your colleague about uh, the situations where you have to give feedbacks to your seniors, you know. Uh, so that's what we're going to be, be basing on today. Checking question for today before we get to the question. Uh, sorry, the session. I want to understand. Uh, do we have like two people here who ever gave any feedback to someone who's a junior and then you also deliver the feedback to someone who's a, a senior to you how did it go what was their reaction if you can just share us a quick story about it we would so much appreciate anyone who wants to go ahead i can see so many people are still uh sharing how they're feeling um Yo, Abdullah, Abdullah, man, totally understand you, my guy. I hope everything gets better. You can, I mean, fingers crossed for you. I'm telling you, we will go, we will go through it. Yeah, yeah. Keep it up. Still, so, sharing us about the feedback of someone senior to you. It can it's it, it doesn't have to be in a workplace. It can even be your brother, you know, it can even be uh your friend, it can even be and it doesn't have to be negative. Sometimes it has to even be positive. Actually, most of the time it should be absolutely positive. You probably saw the big excellent work they have been doing, and you thought you would recognize that. Tell them that they have been doing an amazing job. You know, I know that's something we face almost in a, in our everyday lives, and we have like two people sharing, guys. Anyone you can open your mic. Anyone who wants to share, let be quick. Like. 
Anyone who wants what happened today, by the way? What happened? I'm feeling like I'm talking to myself. Yeah. Sorry, can you please repeat the question? I just joined and I didn't catch what the question was. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Pete. So we are going to be talking about uh, feedback, especially uh, feedback delivery when to uh, direct is how you get to deliver the journey to a team leader in a certain company. So the have you ever gave anyone a feedback before and someone you the Experience. Positive. Thanks from me. Let me find a way to fix that. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay, thank you. When when I start breaking it again, you can tell me. I can see that the network is not stable. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's go again. I believe we had a question. You ever delivered a feedback to someone who's a junior to you and also someone who's a senior to you? Can we have someone... Um, who wants to answer? Yes, Abdel? Okay, so uh, in my previous uh, workplace, uh, there was a thing uh, where we had a stand-up meeting every Monday to uh, kind of assess what our week's work was. So basically, uh, at that position, there would be a senior uh, people there and also interns that we uh, individually manage because we had two interns uh, below us so that we can show them how the work is done and everything. So that's what the basic work approach. So when delivering a feedback, uh, I usually uh, kind of start from the good thing. So basically, I will appreciate their effort and I will highlight what positive things they have done throughout the week or throughout the job. And I will try to uh, kind of acknowledge how what how they made an effort and everything and also after doing these things i think it, i will set the ground for a much positive vibe uh, throughout the conversation and upon doing that then i can deliver the things that i want to address so basically if there is a shortcomings i will try to highlight those areas and uh, i will try to annotate un 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 those areas like the things we might improve upon or other things uh, when going to the senior people i will try to kind of uh, make them understand how we approach the work and how we have done the work and basically uh, how uh, how we were able to achieve what we achieved so far but and uh, if there is any shortcomings i will try to explain what we did and advise them to give us a more specific tasks or a, a more uh, detailed uh, set of jobs in particular. So uh, I believe that's how I usually approach feedbacks in our in my previous experiences. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much for sharing, Abel. Really, that was detailed. Absolutely. So yeah, since my 
network seems a little bit off. Uh, let's continue. I hope there are so many other people who also had the same experience that they can refer to. But yeah, delivering feedbacks most of the time, you get this kind of reactions that we have here. You know, someone will tell you like, oh, you, you were probably so harsh or so rude. Like, please be more constructive when you giving out your feedbacks. Or someone will just be like, okay, thank you for your input. And then they keep going. And someone else will be like, okay, I don't mind criticism, really. Uh, you know, share your feedbacks anytime. Uh, you know, th th these are like some of the kind of funny um, reactions I found and which are very realistic. But yeah, let's talk about why uh, they... Uh, the way we deliver feedback to the senior management, because most of the time we are used to us delivering feedback to our juniors, which is kind of doable and not complicated, like how delivering feedback to the senior management can be a little bit complicated, you know. So giving out feedbacks to the management, I always really give out this kind of um, insights all the time, it's better to give out feedback by asking questions. You have to come to the reality that probably you don't have much information about what's going on. For instance, it's a project they want to start and they have developed different strategies about it, but you are not convinced about them. You feel like within your expertise and your experience working on the same thing, probably in different companies, you feel like you should do it in a different way and you want to bring your ideas on board. So how do you do that? You don't go straight and be like, oh no, I don't feel like this is true. I don't feel like this should be done this way. Like I'm not with you on this idea. Like you don't try to be negative straight away instead you ask questions you know i gave out two different guiding questions that you can ask for instance you have gone throughout the project and of course all the time you should be having information uh, no you should be clear about the questions you want to ask for instance you should be asking questions like help me understand this point that means that you have read that point before, but you don't feel like you are not convinced about the, po the, the explanation. So it's always better to ask these kind of questions, like help me understand this and that. Or even uh, ask them, like, what's the history of this initiative? Probably you don't understand everything because you don't understand how the project came up. You know, so asking any detailed questions, we always guide you when you are about to give out your feedbacks. And always when you are talking to the management, you should be remembering the top three things. You should remember to maintain respect and open communication throughout the conversation. Respect and open communications because these are your seniors. They probably have more experience than you. So always you don't come out very negative like straight negative you should be coming uh with respect and open communication asking open-ended questions because that's how you will get the information you need and also you should always be remembering your goal you know your goal is not to critique it's not to critique for the sake of criticizing. You should be remembering that your goal here is to collaborate with your manager. You are asking questions because you want to understand how better you can help them within the project. You, so your goal is you have to remember that you want to understand how better you can collaborate with your manager to contribute to the team success. You are looking for more information of how you can do your part within the project. And then number three, always always be prepared to listen to their perspective as well be open to adjustment based on the feedback you received on your questions be prepared to listen like listen without having any kind of different idea in your mind sit and just listen about their perspective on your questions and also be open to adjustment i think we all know the kind different type of people in our lives who you can tell anything but they won't understand because they already have a different idea in their mind you know they feel like they don't want to understand anything they don't want to hear any other idea so always have an, an listening open-minded 
and type of uh, attitude within your conversation. And so after that, after you have listened, most of the time you will find that they have told you already things that you probably also were thinking about, like they gave you answers that you probably were also thinking about. So how do you bring in your ideas? How do you bring in your ideas? For instance, you have understood the whole project, but the deadline doesn't come up with you. You know, probably they said that the deadline of the project should be what? In four months. But for you, you feel like according to your experience and the reality in the ground, uh, according to the reality of your team and their capacity and everything, the resources you have, you feel like that can be doable within seven months. So how do you bring out that idea? always ask um no don't, don't uh it's not like asking questions but bringing your idea in terms of suggestions ask them according to these three guiding questions you can even get more guiding questions but let's take the ones we have here you get to ask them have you considered this you know for instance how have you considered the deadline to be a little bit longer for seven months or what are your thoughts if we set the deadline to this? Or what if we do this and that? You don't impose your ideas like, mm -mm, you know, the deadline doesn't set up with me. It needs to be seven, seven months instead of four. No, instead better to have your ideas listened is that you give out suggestions. You have to ask them, like, can we consider this? What are your thoughts if we do this? Because most of the time you might even find that they, they haven't thought about the idea that you brought. They haven't thought it in a perspective that you wanted them to think it through. So all the time, ask your, um, ask your questions in terms of suggestions. Actually, this doesn't even work only in a workplace. These also work in a very broadened kind of, you know, um, the broader life perspective that we all live in. When you want to give out the best idea, it's the psychology, it's, it's the game of mind. You have to give them suggestions instead of imposing your idea to them. So two options we come up from here, especially when you are talking to the uh, senior management, they will tell you that they agree or they will tell you to convince them. Actually, the high probability is that they will tell you to convince them. They will be like, okay, no, um, I'm not convinced about the idea of extending the deadline because probably we have clients waiting for this to go live in four months. So I'm not convinced at all. You know, they will tell you, convince me, convince me. So how do you go about that? You know. How do you go about um, the idea that they told you? I'm not convinced. Do you go angry or do you develop your ideas? And here are the different five steps which are very crucial to developing your ideas. So all the ideas you had in mind when you say that the deadline can better be in seven months, you have to back up um, your ideas with this. You know, you, of course, First and foremost, when you are giving them detailed, uh, detailed suggestions, you should be focusing on solutions, not just on problems. Of course, you have the problem that probably the team capacity, everything, every resources and tools you have to work on the project within four months. You you understand that it's a problem, you know. They, they cannot meet the four months deadline. But what are what are the solutions are you offering here? The clients are going to wait, which is a wrong thing. You don't keep the client waiting for several months, according to the reality of the project. Or what solutions are you offering? All the time, back up your ideas, especially to the management, back up your ideas with solutions, with solutions. And next thing, be specific and constructive. You know, be specific in your idea. And when you are imposing about what they, were, what they suggested before, like the real project timeline of four months, don't say, oh, you think that was wrong. Mm -mm. Say it in a very more constructive way. 
be positive instead. And then number three, support your ideas with data or examples. You can give out examples from the past. Probably you worked on another kind of project where they gave out a very limited deadline and you ended up with so many challenges because everyone within the team was uh, was on that tight deadline, they were stressed. So you just support your new idea with data and examples. Tell them the reality of things, examples from the past of a, or examples of what can happen, you know. And then all the time, express with the impacts. Express with the impacts, which is a very crucial, crucial point. What do I mean by expressing with the impact? All the times, don't just think about uh, your team or just you or uh, just the clients or just the team. Think of the impact on the wider pr perspective. What impact is my idea is going to have on the management team? What impact is it going to have on my team, specifically the team I'm leading? What impact is it going to have on the clients? What impact is it going to have on the organization reputation in general? Always express the impact. If your impacts are going to be, of course, no, you cannot give out ideas that are going to give out impact negative impacts. Of course, all the time, your ideas should be expressing the positive impacts to the organization. Because you can do all this, you can offer solutions, you can be constructive and positive, you can back, back up your ideas with data, realistic data. But if the management don't see the exact impact from your ideas, especially company-wide, I mean, they, they won't go with your ideas at all. You know, they will always think of what's profitable and what just brings in more revenues for them because that's the impact for them, you know. And ask for input and collaboration. Always, always when you are done providing your ideas, ask them for input. Don't look like you are just giving out final decisions here. Ask for input, ask for collaboration, ask them what do they think. Ask them, uh, yeah, just simply, what do they think about what everything that you said, everything you told them? And from there, I believe you are going to be coming to the conclusion of everything you're looking for. So there are scenarios where there will be like they are not convinced at all. You probably told them here uh, that, of course, you are offering a solution. Uh, sorry you are focusing uh the, let's keep taking our example of the deadlines you are suggesting that the deadline is seven months that's the solution you're providing you are being very specific on how each task will be done in a period probably of one month two months until seven months are completed you supported your idea with different data and examples probably from the past and you express the impact like you are very sure that once the project is launched in seven months the clients are going to react in a very positive way they are going to be ready to use this and that in a very high scale because the project was worked on very carefully and then you ask for the their input like you have done everything but what if they are not convinced what if they are not convinced at all? This is where you seek more understanding. Probably there are those that you need to connect here. Probably the clients don't need something that looks fancy for you to take one more month designing the UI and UX for that project, you know, but for you, you care about it. So seek for understanding. Probably the clients just need the, that project to run. They need that software to run. That's it. And then you can work on the UX, UI after. You know, you never know. So seek for understanding. That's first and foremost. And then request feedback on your feedbacks. Ask them, um, you know, regarding the feedbacks I gave you, what other feedback, I mean, what can you tell me more about it? I'm sure they will go point by point trying to prove you uh, wrong. You know, trying to explain why uh, why they want what they want and why they cannot go with your ideas. And then number last, demonstrate patience throughout. 
I know so many people get frustrated when our ideas are not con uh, are not considered, especially in a workplace when they hired you because of your expertise, um, they hired you because they know you can do the job, but then you see that they, they are not taking up your ideas, they are not using you to your full capacity. Some of the time we get frustrated we get frustrated and feel like this is not the right environment for us. So always throughout the process, it's important to demonstrate patience. So, and then if it persists, which has the most possibility probabilities of happening, I kept emphasizing on the negative part because if, if they agree, then case solved, case closed. You, uh, you, you will go ahead with your ideas, but what if it persists? You know, those are where I wanted us to keep focusing on what if it doesn't go the way we want it. You will either take their part, which most of us I know that will do. You will either take their part or consider escalation, of course, carefully. Considering escalation, it's like um, you were having this conversation probably with your director, direct director, and he's not understanding what you are trying to tell him or her so you consider escalating it so let's say to the vp to the vp of product uh, so that they can he can uh, be like the third party throughout the conversation and help you decide but this is something that should be like your last very last resort, if I can call it like a last resort, it should be the last thing to consider because most of the time it might bring conflicts. It might bring conflicts. So yeah, let's have a look at the challenge document, which we have here. Um, seeing that I've been signed out, let me try to log in again. Okay, we good. So we have our feedback delivery um, challenge, and I will take you through um, the challenge, which is quite somehow related to what I was uh, telling you, like the examples I was giving you. You are going to find more of it here. So we have our background to the challenge. So you are going to assume that you are team leader at ABC company overseeing oh before i go there can i confirm that we are together that you can understand me you can hear me that everything is clear okay thank you guys thank you i can see that we're together so in the background you are a team leader of this company abc you are overseeing a dynamic and talented team of 15 individuals. In your team, you have 15 individuals. And your team has been assigned to a critical project by senior management. And the project is called Project Delta. Let's try to bold it. And then the management has outlined a plan that involves a specific approach to project execution, which you and your team believe might not be the best effective strategy given the team's expertise and the nature of the project. So in a few, you are assigned to a project called Project Delta. And then the management uh, has already uh, outlined the execution process. Uh, but you and your team, after reading through the project execution process, you feel like something is off. Just according to your expertise and the nature of the project, you feel like there are things that you are not convinced about. There are things that are not, uh, that you probably won't work with um, to reach the success of the project that you all want to see. So what are those things? We have different data on the project um, from the management. This is what they suggested. The project overview, Project Delta is a high profile initiative for the company and it's aiming to develop and launch groundbreaking products within the next seven months. The success of the project is crucial for the company's growth and market position. This is a very crucial project to them 
here they also said it's a critical project to them so that's why they even came up with their own execution process and this came from the top management top management that involves the vps the directors those people who decide what should be done within the department and then here's their plan they have different milestones here the milestone number one is to do the research and analysis and that should be completed in one month and then the prototype to be achieved in two months and then the testing and iteration they just give you one month to complete it and then go through the final product design and development and ensure that you have completed within three months and you are good you should be having um a very full developed project delta at the end of the seventh month i hope this is clear and the timeline of course again the project is expected to be completed within the seven months and the resources the project team members were assigned different tasks based on their years of experience within the company you understand this this is important information and then also the management hired an external consultants for some of the testing and iteration so the management just wants you to do, to do the research and analysis and develop the prototype but when you get on the third one they want that they, they have already hired a consultant company or consultant firm to take care of these you know yeah so that's what you have and then you see this in your team and then you have different concerns that you want to raise with your management here we have first and foremost on the resource allocation the team members are concerned about the allocation of resources being based on years of experience within the company feeling that certain members are underutilized while others are overloaded and they propose a more balanced distribution of tasks based on individual strength and expertise. What does this mean? If you, for instance, uh, I am Pascaline and I'm, I'm very, like I'm an expert in whatever we are going to do here. Let's say this is a software. I'm an expert in software development. I have my very 10 years of experience doing the thing, but I just trained the company a month ago you know, and the management decided that that will give me probably less tasks because I've spent, I, I have very few years of experience. I actually have almost none year, years of experience within the company. So the team was like, you know, that's, that's, no, that's not okay. You know, it's not okay. We want this to be distributed according to individual strength and expertise, which actually makes sense. So this is the concern number one. And then the team members also, they don't understand the idea of hiring external consultants for testing and iteration because they know that there are two members within the team who are testing experts and can do it perfectly. I believe also this is understandable. They, they don't agree with this idea of hiring external consultants to do the testing. You know, this can be done by the team internally. And why you can ask yourself, why is the team claiming this? It's because, of course, if they hire external consultants, these two people won't have a place to participate within the project, which is not okay. So they are speaking up for them. And then we go to time feasibility. You remember that the timeline set is seven months, but the team members, they have doubts about the feasibility of completing certain milestones within the proposed time frame, especially given the complexity of the tasks, and they recommend a more realistic timeline that allows a thorough research development and testing without compromising the quality of the project delta they are going to be developing. And then they are requesting a maximum of 11 months. That's it. Then we go to the decision making process, which is something we don't have here, but this is something they are concerned about. They brought it up, the decision making, the team, they are very uneasy about the top down decision making approach. And they feel that their valuable insight and expertise are not being fully leveraged on. And they would like you as a team leader 
to advocate for a more collaborative decision-making process that involves the team in key decisions, ensuring a well-rounded perspective. What does this mean? They don't like this, um, this approach of the management, this top-down uh, decision-making approach. It means it's the decisions are uh, coming from the top, moving down to the bottom. And the team doesn't understand how uh, the management is deciding for them on what should be done. Most of the time, in a normal and um, in a normal, how can I call it? In a normal empowering environment workplace, the management decides what should be done, but they don't give out the details. They don't give out these milestones. They don't give out the time. Okay, they can give you the timeline, but most of the time they will involve your ideas because you are the one with expertise. And then they will assess those ideas and see if they can go with what they want and then decide on a middle ground there. I mean, decide according to both of your ideas. But this management team here, they are deciding everything and they just want you to implement, which the team doesn't like. You know, when you have a team of expertise people, they won't allow this kind of behavior. They want to be involved in the discussions big time because that's how they feel hard. So what are your tasks? Your task is to bridge the gap between the management's plan and your team's concern. Your goal is to ensure understanding and a shared commitment to the project success on both sides. Your task and your goal. And the detailed task here, you are going to write a Slack message to the senior management, communicating your team's concern, communicating all this Slack message. And then number two, you are going to imagine that the senior management approves, um, like imagine that the senior management approves the resource allocation proposal, but they reject the timeline decision making they approve this resource allocation. They approve that, um, you know, they are going to be changing the tasks for everyone just according to their strength and expertise. And they are going to not hire these external consultants anymore. They approve this, but they deny this timeline and the decision-making process. They said, oh, we are the one who are going to be deciding here. Of course, I'm saying it in a rude way, but they, they just, Imagine that they just replied that they won't be going with your two suggestions here. So what do you do about it? You are going to write an email convincing the senior management about the importance of the suggested team's timeline and decision-making process. All the proposals that they gave out, the two rest, you are going to write another email convincing them that that is much more important. And number three, <clears throat> Imagine that the senior management still rejects the proposals like um, on the timeline and decision-making process and tells you that the timeline will remain as 10, seven months and decision-making process will remain as a top-down approach because probably this is a very critical and sensitive project for them. So they want, it to, keep, they want to keep it this way. So what are you going to do? write down a detailed steps on which you will communicate these final decisions to your team to ensure that they understand the final decisions and are ready to come on board and work on the project happily. I believe this is self-explanatory. And number two, what will your communication focus on? I.e. write down the general topics you will focus on while communicating these. What's the difference between these two questions? Here you are going just to write the detailed steps on how you are going to communicate this to your team. For instance, one of the steps can be, are you going to communicate this on Slack or are you going to invite them to a Zoom meeting? I'm trying to show you the difference. But here, what will your communication focus on? It's what exactly are you going to tell your team? to ensure that everyone is on board, everyone understands and everyone is going to be working on the project happily because you don't want anyone to feel like, um, you know, they are not okay working on the project. And number four, you are going to imagine that one of your team members decide 
to resign from the company because he thinks that the senior management team is being very dictatorial. How will you communicate this to your team to ensure stability within the team? Because, um, yeah, this is something that happens. This is something that happened in also in my experience is something that happened in my two different workspaces, previous workspaces. This is something that happened. Some of the team members weren't on board with what the management wanted us to do, and they decided to resign. And they would just send a resigning email send, saying that the senior management team is very, they act like dictators, you know, they are not flexible. And that's not a favorable uh, environment for them. Like, you know, they would just send very detailed email, but resigning just because of this same situation. So as a manager, as a team leader, how are you going to communicate this to your team to ensure stability within the team? Because everyone will leave themselves questioning themselves, like, why am I still here? <laughs> you know, they will start actually to be on the side of the colleague who left, who resigned. So what are you going to do to ensure stability within the team? That's the challenge i'm going to be adding here more about submission i think we didn't add submission but yeah it's going to be in a powerpoint i will be giving out specific slides you are going to follow uh but these are the marking rubrics we are going to check on the slack message you sent read more about it and then the email you sent to the senior management we want to understand um your focus on how you will clearly communicate the importance of the team's proposed timeline and decision making process and um we, we want to see how are you going to emphasize on potential risks and also potential benefits potential risks um talking like um uh, if a project is set to be delivered in seven months but your team is not confident about delivering it in seven months what are the risks do we have you know those are the kind of things we want you to talk about within the email and we are going to see the kind of language you used when you are talking to the senior management and also final decision communication and also team management about the team leader uh, sorry the team member who decided to resign important notes everywhere we strongly again encourage you to use self-generated content in responding to the challenges please always always don't use ai generated content or relying on any ai tools at all because we really highly value and prioritize your independent thinking because it's what's going to guide us and also ethical conduct throughout the training program. So let's ensure that. I think that is it. This is going to be kind of a fun thing to work on. Um, yeah, that's why I want to hear your, um, your insights. Is it clear or any questions? question Fenwell said it's okay others others is it is it clear or anything I can repeat Carol and Diaya said it's all right Yoftahe yes you can open uh okay so the slack message and the email so are we really saying uh, sending this to someone or are we incorporating it into the powerpoint as if like uh, what this is what i would have sent through the slack or through the email yeah uh, oh you don't have to send it to anyone you just you will have just to write your email within your powerpoint presentation that's it the email that you would send in this suggest in this situation. Oh, okay, okay. Thank yeah. You. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Or can we call it a day? 
Is it clear? I'm all, I, I always want to ensure that um, the challenges are clear. All right. 